I think that ethanol, alcohol, reduces <laughs> resolution. And the purpose of uh, social ethanol consumption is to reduce the resolution of all participants until they have a, a lowest common denominator where they completely match. <laughs> Right, so uh, it's a good tool for uh, uh, having a sense of close connection with people that uh, have subtle differences to you, mm -hmm. and or at least uh, maybe not so subtle if you take more alcohol. Mm -hmm. And with uh, psychedelics, it seems to be the opposite. That is, it increases resolution. Mm -hmm. And if you increase resolution in a machine learning system, you are bound to overfit. There is probably for the set of sensory data that you are looking at in any given domain, an optimal resolution of the function that you use to describe it, to make sense of the data. It's something that we notice when we do statistics, right? You have a number of points and you try to fit a curve to the point. Uh, which complexity should this curve have? Should it try to reproduce all the wiggles that you see in the data or should it try to average a little bit over the data? And what is the resulting shape of the curve? Mm -hmm. Right, that has to do with the noise that is apparent in the data and uh, in your sensory organs. So, uh, if you have uh, enough time for evolving your uh, cognitive uh, domain in your brain, so how many uh, bits do you apply to model visual features or social features or mm -hmm. cognitive features and so on, you should, in some sense, allocate an optimal number of bits to this particular function that models this domain. So you're most likely to not overfit and not underfit. So you're not uh, losing subtlety in describing the thing, but you're also not discovering subtlety where there is none. Mm -hmm. And the criterion of whether you discover subtlety that uh, where there is none is how predictive is it of the future? For instance, I read an article uh, where somebody proudly reported that they discovered the uh, exact function that describes uh, the Californian housing market. And it was an uh, extremely elaborate function that uh, had lots and lots of uh, parameters in it, uh, like uh, growth of households, growth of incomes, uh, and so on. And uh, it exactly could reproduce the past uh, evolution of the uh, market of the price curve of Californian houses over decades. And as a computer scientist, I was looking at this and I was just laughing out loud because it was overfitting. This function had all these three parameters that enough of them and he twiddled them until the parameters gave a function that was fitting that thing. And if you have enough three parameters, you can always get a fit, right? Yeah. Uh, but this thing is not going to be predictive. So it's, it's likely that uh, in the future, this thing is going to deviate. And so the way in which machine learning typically deals with this is that we... Um, uh, take a part of the of this curve and uh, take it out and use it as validation data. Mm -hmm. And then we, uh, we make it blind, uh, the learning algorithm blind to it, so we don't tell it this part. And we uh, try to find a function that guesses the invisible part and see how well it does this. And we do this for all the parts. So to extract all the information, we basically mask out every portion of this curve for different instances of this learning thing. And we try to find one learning, uh, one function that we can learn that works for all of them equally well, right? That predicts all the possible observations from all the ups other observations. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the best you can do under the circumstances, unless you have some insight into first principles and understand how this housing market actually functions by really going into the lowest level uh, of the causal structure and understanding it, which is not accessible, right? Because people buy houses and sell houses for so many different reasons that there is going to be practically for you a lot of noise because you cannot write down this term. Why uh, somebody died at this point and had to sell, uh, uh, the children had to sell their house uh, very quickly and so on, right? You cannot get all these things right. You only get statistical average, right? So what psychedelics seem to be doing is that they increase the resolution dramatically. And what people often describe is that they're able to stare at any object, whether it's outside in, uh, in the uh, sensory domain or whether it's uh, in their memories or imagination, and they can uh, discover unending detail. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have this increased resolution, you are prone to overfitting, which means you construct objects that can explain the past better, but the future worse. And so when you look at the performance of people on psychedelics, they are able to explain the deepest problems of reality uh, extremely well, while uh, physically in this state, they're not able to uh, program a VCR. Uh, <laughs> or uh, but they're basically no longer able to interact with the environment very meaningfully, but they can explain everything. 
and uh, heavy psychedelics users also tend not to be the most successful people at predicting the stock market and so on. They might have uh, the ability to reach a certain insight when they're stuck. There have been some experiments where people think about a problem for a very long time, and then uh, they uh, were given in some controlled study a dose of psilocybin, and then uh, they had this um, insight that connected everything, and this insight was often a good one. Mm -hmm. right? So you're able to fill in the gaps, you're able to uh, relax your priors, you're able to see things from a new perspective. But uh, imagine you now in a context where you wonder whether telepathy happened and you interpret everything that happened in this interaction from the perspective, could this be the case? And you find lots and lots of details that you've uh, put into your function that describes reality that uh, is establishing this connection. But it doesn't mean that the objects that are used to describe reality now are actually cutting the world at the joints. They might be overfitting. Mm -hmm. right? This is the big danger. What would it look like if a human brain would overfit data in the same way as a machine learning system does? probably would like a human brain on psychedelics. Mm 